Today we're looking at the power loom. Hello, welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, don't forget to check out dailybellringer.com for more resources that go along with many of these videos. The power loom was one of the most revolutionary inventions of the late 1700s that fed the Industrial Revolution in Europe and then spread over to the United States. In the northeastern part of the United States, textile factories, or in other words, factories that manufactured cloth, began to pop up everywhere. Interestingly, the invention of the cotton gin in 1794 in the south ended up feeding the growth of the textile mills in the north and also led to the growth of the institution of slavery in America. Weaving together of threads into cloth, of course, was occurring long before industrialization began to take hold. It was done by hand on a loom, which would take dozens and dozens of strings of thread and weave them together into cloth. The process was a long and tedious job, as it would take several hours to produce one yard of fabric. This was known as a cottage industry, since the majority of the manufacturing of clothing was simply done in people's homes. In 1785, Edmund Cartwright patented the first water-powered loom in England, and a few years later, in 1790, the first steam-powered weaving factory was built in Manchester, England. Now the production of cloth was completely automatic, and one person could monitor several machines as they weave together fabric. Over the next almost 50 years, improvements were made to the design and efficiency of the power looms. Industrialization took off in England, as by 1803 there were approximately 2,400 power looms operating, but a little over 50 years later, in 1857, there was 250,000 looms producing cloth in large factories. England had a virtual monopoly on the textile business, and in fact they passed laws making it illegal to sell looms to foreign countries or for workers in textile factories to emigrate to other countries to protect their business. But in 1811, an American, Francis Cabot Lowell, visited England and took tours of several textile factories while there. Lowell, of course, couldn't take any pictures because, of course, photography wasn't really invented yet. But he also was forbidden from drawing any diagrams or anything he saw, so he examined the machines and committed what he saw to memory. He then returned to Boston, Massachusetts and contacted Paul Moody, who was a mechanic, and based on Lowell's memory, they built a power loom in America. And by 1814, together, Lowell and Moody opened a textile mill in Waltham, Massachusetts. Lowell led the way in developing a new method of manufacturing in which the raw material of cotton arrived at the factory and then was processed and woven into cloth all under one roof. Lowell died suddenly, though, of pneumonia in 1817 at the age of 42. In 1826, the town of Lowell, Massachusetts was founded as a new manufacturing center for textiles, and many called the town the cradle of the Industrial Revolution. More and more factories began popping up, and by the 1850s, Lowell was, man was the manufacturing center of the United States. Raw cotton planted and harvested by enslaved people in the South was shipped north to Lowell, where it was manufactured into finished textiles. These textile factories were one of the first places that women in America entered the workforce. The factories recruited young single women, usually between the ages of 15 to 30, but some working in the mills were as young as 7 or 8 years old. These women became known as mill girls. Most had grown up on farms, but the prospect of living in a city and having some financial independence was very attractive. However, working in the mills wasn't easy. These women had to work 12 to 14 hour days and work half days on Saturdays. The mills were closed on Sunday so that workers could attend church, but the owners of the mills were very strict and made their workers follow strict codes of conduct. Most of the women lived in large boarding houses owned by the factories, and it was in these boarding houses that many women began to organize to protest long working days and unsafe working conditions. The mill girls in Lowell went on to strike many times to attempt to get factory owners to meet their demands. Demands. The rise of factories such as the textile mills in Lowell contributed to the growth of wage labor jobs and the growth of large cities, especially in the northeastern part of the United States. This growth would lead many to look west for other opportunities and contribute to the idea of manifest destiny in America throughout the 1830s through the 1860s. So with that, hopefully you learned something and thanks for watching.